Hello and welcome to the lesson where we're going to be talking about how we join tables together so that we can select data from multiple tables. Up to this point, we've only selected from a single table, but as we know, most of the time you're going to be selecting data from across multiple tables. So in this example that we're going to jump into from the book, um, you're going to see that uh, in this select statement, they are selecting an invoice number, which is a field on the invoice table. And they're also selecting the vendor name. And to do that, if I were just to say, hey, I want to go select from vendors, right? First off, you're not going to be able to do that because the invoice number doesn't exist there. So we're going to have to do this vendors interjoined invoices. But you can't just say just, just that. You have to specify the keys that actually join those tables together. So the vendor ID exists on both the vendors table and it exists on the invoices table because every invoice has to be tied to a vendor. So if you think about it, uh, this syntax basically is saying, hey, I want to select some data from vendors interjoined to invoices, and they are interjoined on the vendors vendor uh, ID equals the invoices vendor ID. So if I run this, uh, you'll see that this returns both the invoice number and the vendor name that that invoice number is tied to. Now I want to take a second and just pull something out of this query. I just want to select star from this, and I want to show you what's actually happening here. So let's just do this. So what you'll see here is the first thing that's happening is that it's actually selecting everything from the vendors table. And this is everything here, right? Uh, vendor 110, you know, all that information. And as we progress along, we're going to see that eventually we're going to find this invoice number. And everything from here over is all the data that's on the invoices table. And you'll actually see that the vendor ID here, it doesn't just say it's the vendor ID, it's the vendor ID 1. So, and the reason it's doing that is because the vendor ID exists on both the vendor table and it exists in the invoices table. Um, and so it's calling it vendor ID 1 because it can't have duplicate uh, column names. So essentially what this did is it took every row on the vendors table and it maps it to the row that matches it on the invoice table, and it pulls that. And so you'll see here, right, this is vendor ID. Uh, you'll see that it's actually duplicated multiple times, and that's because this row here, um, it ties to both the invoice 37, 36, and 34, because here's vendor 110. So what it's doing, it, it's it actually finds that one row, and then it maps it to the um, the invoice row that actually ties to that vendor. So you'll see here's vendor 110, here's vendor 110. So it actually just, you know, joins it three different times. Um, it joins, you know, this vendor to each of these three invoices. And this is what you actually are doing when you join two tables together. You're actually creating this one massive, uh, you know, unnormalized table. And then what we do from there is then we decide, hey, I want to go and grab the invoice number which is a field that we have access to. It's right uh, here. And I also want to grab the vendor name. And that's another field we have access to. So when I run it, so we have joined all these columns together across these two tables. And now I just want these two columns. And um, as we go through this, I'm going to just do one more example here. Let's add in vendor ID. Uh, now, we know that the vendor ID actually exists on two different tables. If I type it in, you'll see there's an invoices.vendor ID and there's a vendor.vendor ID. So let me just run this for a second and see what happens. You're going to get this error that says column ambiguously defined. And that is because, according to you know, the database, it sees this as, hey, there are two vendor IDs. Uh, there's one on this table and there's one on this table. So you have to tell me which one you want me to show you. It's not as easy enough to just to say, give me the vendor ID, because again, the, from the database standpoint, it says, hey, there's two columns here. So what we have to then do is we have to specify that we want, uh, we can either say, hey, I want, a, I want the vendor's vendor ID, or we could actually say, give me the invoices vendor ID. It really doesn't matter because they're going to be, they, they both contain the same data. Um, you know, if you go back and, and just select star from this, you'll see that the, the, the data is the same in both those columns, but we have to be explicit.
So that's just something to be aware of. Like what I'm showing you here is that, you know, we're joining these two tables across, um, you know, when we do an inner join, we're joining both the tables together. Then we will specify what columns we want after this, out of this join data set uh, to pull back. Um, so yeah. So let's go on here and look at the next one, which is uh, showing you that not only can we, um, you know, join uh, two tables together, but we can also give them a table alias. And to do that, that's where we're actually just adding in this little uh, nickname right after the table. Um, and if I were to take this out, let me just start over here and say, let's just do it like this. So if I actually were to add this in myself, we could go in and say, hey, I want this to be called uh, then, and I want this to be called INV. Now, uh, when we say go join uh, on, you know, the vendor ID equals the vendor ID, I don't have to type out vendors uh, every time. I could just type out then, um, or I could type out INV. But typically, when we're doing a table alias, it's just good to make it a very simple table alias. So V will represent vendors, and I will represent um, invoices. Um, and I say keep the table alias as simple as possible. If I got to, let's say, the invoice line table, I would call it IL. Uh, if I got to the customer table, call it C. Uh, if it's the order table, call it O. So it's just really simple. Um, and then what this allows us to do is if I decide later on, hey, I want to bring in that vendor ID, I can bring it in and just say v.vendorid and, oh, sorry. So I didn't add the, uh, the alias back in. And there you go, it works just fine. And again, I could refer to invoices.vendorid or vendor.vendorid. All right, so that's what a table alias does. And then what this allows you to do is make your code a little easier to read. And it doesn't have to, we don't have to add in this, this complicated, you know, table every single time um, we can start to shorten our code. And one thing is you get more technical and you learn to write code. Shortening your code is always, you know, nice to have. Um, so in this example, um, we actually can use a uh, table alias, uh, but we only have to use it necessarily on one table. So this is just what this example is showing you. I don't even like this table alias, so I'm actually going to change it to line item, uh, li for line items. And I'm going to run it this way. I'm going to say, give me the invoice number, the invoice uh, item amount, the item description, and I'm going to just add it to one table. And, you know, it ran just fine. Let's actually remove this where clause and see. Uh, I think the issue that happened here was, let me just go see if there's actually star from. Ah, it looks like when I was running my insert script that I did not insert some test data here. So if you run this, uh, this, um, this statement here that we give you, just make sure that uh, the script that you ran ahead of time uh, actually is working. Uh, it looks like I don't have invoice line data on here, so uh, that may cause a bit of a problem here. Um, so uh, let's try to, um, um, you know, look past that, uh, because when I try to join to the invoice line items table, it's going to have a, a bit of an issue. Um, I'm not going to have any data there, so there's nothing to join. Um, so in the next example, the point of showing you this is that this is just showing you can use table aliases not only on you know, both tables, you can use it on one if you want just to simplify your code. Um, and the fact that this runs without error tells me that it's running just fine. And if there was data in the invoice line table, it would run just fine. Uh, so the, com the compound inner joins example that was from the book, um, what this was showing was that you know, we can join um, multiple tables and we can even add in filters within our from clause. But as we stated in the kind of concept lecture about this, we want to avoid doing that. So if you were to, uh, you know, say, hey, I want to pull this information, um, and let me just space this out. Let's get used to writing your code in, in a nice, clean format. Um, if I want to join invoices in the invoice line information, um, and I want to pull this data, but I only want to pull where the invoice total is greater than the invoice line amount, um, then we can, um, we can add that filter in the where clause. Even though you can do it in the from, we want to avoid doing that. So try running this. Again, I'm not going to get any data back just because my data script here didn't run, but I don't want to have that slow us down. 
But what would happen here is that you would see that both of these statements are going to run and give you the same results. Um, and this is just showing you that, you know, you can add that filter into the join. But we're going to tell you this is the best practice right here is to add that filter in the where clause. And the last thing I want to hit before we jump into the complex joins, outer joins and all that, is just what is a self-join. So self-joins are kind of a unique thing. In this example from the book, what you actually see happening here, and th this one gets a little bit complex because, uh, you know, first off, what it's doing is it's grabbing the distinct vendor name, city, and state uh, from uh, the vendor table, but it's joining vendor to vendor. And this is kind of weird, right? Because you might think, well, why am I joining vendors to vendors? Well, let's look at actually what it's joining on. It's joining uh, where the city of a vendor equals the city of another vendor, and the state of that vendor equals the state of another vendor, and the vendor ID does not equal the vendor ID of that vendor. So let's think about what that means. If you, if you kind of take vendor and vendor, and you say, okay, well, Let's say I have a vendor uh, from Dallas, Texas, and another from New York. Um, and let's say I have a couple from Dallas and one from New York. Um, if I try to join, let's say, those three vendors, I say, okay, I have vendor one from New York, and um, I have vendor two from New York, and vendor three from, from Dallas. Now, if I try to join the, uh, you know, each record back to another record in the vendor, what it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, go find a vendor that also has this city. And it will uh, end up saying, okay, well, this New York vendor, there's, there's a vendor, you know, itself, right, that's from New York. There's another vendor from New York. And this other vendor from Dallas is not a vendor from New York. So it will eventually be able to start to see where there's similarities between the vendors. So let me just jump in and, and take this one part of the code out and, and run this. Um, what you see happening here is that, so here's Wells Fargo uh, Bank. It's in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And so what Wells Fargo is doing, if I kind of sort here, well, actually, let's, let's use, we'll use uh, ABC. Actually, let's, let's stick with Wells Fargo. I'm going to sort this. Let me just narrow down here. Let me add this in. Vendor name. I can't remember exactly what it was, so I'm just going to use Wells was it Wells Fargo? It's uh, ambiguous, so that means I need to be clear about what column I'm pulling. Uh, all right, here we go. So here's the Wells Fargo bank. So Wells Fargo is in Phoenix, Arizona. And what it's doing here is it goes and it joins to all of the other vendors that are also in Phoenix, Arizona. And so essentially what it's doing is it's finding everywhere that a vendor matches another vendor uh, city and state-wise. But notice here, it's also saying where the, uh, where the vendor ID does not equal the other vendor ID. Uh, so meaning, uh, if I take that out, what you'll see here is that um, it's going to find that this Wells Fargo, it's in Phoenix, Arizona, it's actually, uh, it actually um, has the same city and state as three other vendors. But what it did is it said, hey, if it finds that it's got the same city and state of its own, you know, of itself, you know, so it's saying uh, where the vendor ID and uh, both, uh, you know, sides don't equal each other. So it's kind of canceling out itself. And so let's run this again one more time. So what it's simply doing is, and I, this is a complex example the book is showing. I'm going to show you a better one here in a second. But what it's essentially doing is it's trying to find everywhere uh, there is a vendor um, multiple vendors in one city. So if I go back to the original version of this query, what it really does is it says, hey, go give me the vendor uh, name and city and state um, and join it back to itself. And we're only going to find and return vendors uh, that um, are in a city that have multiple vendors in that city. And so if you run this, and you'll see here that... Um, this is all of the vendors uh, that are in cities that have multiple vendors. Um, this is filtering out any city that only has a single vendor. And if you, um, if you wanted to test that, we could simply go and say, I want to select star uh, from uh, vendors. And let's just go look at that data really quickly. And let's uh, sort by 
city. And here you go, like here's Ann Arbor, Michigan. All right, so let's see, does vendor 110 in Ann Arbor, Michigan, they're the only vendor there, do they show up in this list? Uh, Malloy lithographing. So I'm gonna sort here by Malloy lithographing. Scroll down. Oh, and we took out this. You'll notice they had in a distinct here, which removes any of the duplicates. So let's do that. Okay, scroll down. And we see that Malloy lithographing is not there. Now, I want to state one thing. Is this going to be a common query that you're going to probably write? I think the book shows it to you to show you what kind of a self-join can be done, what you can do with a self-join. There is a much easier way to go and validate whether or not um, you know, the count of vendors in a city is greater than one. In fact, that's what we're going to get into in uh, a, a next video down the road uh, when we talk about um, summary queries and using something called the having clause. So we're going to uh, uh, not spend too much more time on this, but I do want to show you one self-join example, and it's this um, employees table. So if I go really quickly and just look at the uh, employees table. So select for a star from employees, and I'm just going to run this by itself. You'll notice here that um, the employee name, uh, first name, last name, the department they're in, and then it also lists the ID of the manager. Now, note that Cindy Smith does not have a manager. Um, all right, so she is she is manage, She is not being managed. But then you have this next person, uh, Elmer Jones. He's in department four, and the manager assigned to Elmer Jones is uh, in manager ID of one, which ties to Cindy Smith. So this is the employee ID of the manager. So what that tells me is that Elmer Jones and Paulo Lucario both are managed by Cindy Smith. And you'll notice here that like Ralph, uh, he is being managed by uh, employee two. So Elmer is Ralph's manager. Now, this is a common thing that we see self-joins. Uh, you know, if I say, hey, I want to be able to, uh, first off, I want to be able to join uh, the person to their manager, we could actually do that. We could actually join um, each record here. So I could say, hey, go pull Elmer Jones and then join uh, this employee table back to employee where this manager ID equals the employee ID. So let's see what actually happens when we do that. So what you see here is here's Elmer Jones, uh, the manager ID of one, and that ties to Cindy Smith. And you'll see that Paulo Lucario also is tied to Cindy Smith. And so what we could do here is we could run a query like this one here that I'm gonna give you. And you'll see here that this is a list of all the employees and their assigned manager. And the, the reason we have to do this is that um, we're, we're storing the managers and the employees in the same table. If you were thinking, well, why don't we just store the managers in their own table? We'll have employees and managers. Well, what happens if an employee becomes a manager? Do you take them out of the employee table and put them in the manager's table? This is where it actually makes sense to kind of keep them in a single employee's table and to actually self-join back. So this is the most common example I see with self-joins is, is the idea of the employee and the manager or if like there's a people table that stores both managers and employees. So this is a common thing that we see. Um, so just be aware that self-joins exist. Be aware that you can use them uh, when you have uh, a two columns on a table that can actually store similar data. Uh, so in this example here, you see right the manager ID and the employee ID. These are actually the same data. It's just that this this is tying one record here, like uh, Elmer, to another record over here. All right, I'm going to stop there. And the next uh, video that will come after this, we'll talk about um, outer joins. And we'll also talk about how we can join uh, in other ways using something called a union and intersect and minus statement. And these are, these are also very valuable tools to learn. So make sure that you cover that uh, concept as well. But if you have any questions, uh, I suggest you jump into the code, actually run it uh, while you're doing the reading, because that's really how a lot of this inner join and outer join stuff is going to make sense. So until then, we'll see you in the next video. And thanks for joining.